Testing, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, good evening. Welcome, YouTubers. Bless you tonight. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> Those of you thinking of visiting Arizona, postpone that. It's too hot here to, to visit, and it is hot. Out there, real hot, professional heat. So an amateur stuff this is a real deal. Right? But uh, you can still get healed and delivered online. It happens all the time. Yeah? Our next seminar is our women's seminar. That's the best one of the year. Um, we do it a little bit differently than Hillsong does their women's conventions. Um, I will not be showing up naked with a guitar. We won't have the naked cowboy here for you. We will not have that. They have they have that at Hillsong. But can you imagine me showing up naked with a guitar? Wouldn't that be horrible? Gosh, you know so what's so bad about that? I can't play the guitar. But anyway, here let's get to the radio. It's every day, Monday through Friday, on uh, the morning and the afternoon, and uh, you can always get the radio programs 24/7 on SoundCloud.com/slash/hardcore-christianity. If you switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, Hardcore Christianity, you can help us pay for the Healing House next door. We're in the process of renovating that. And I thank you for all your donations for that. It's going to be something special. Our teaching tonight is on uh, our second YouTube channel, House of Healing AZ. As Vivian clearly mentioned earlier, YouTubers, when you get your training here, you go to the Deliverance Training Channel which is our first YouTube channel. And then you open up your terror cell in your church. You start picking off the sick people. Remember, that's your commission from our ministry. And you use that scripture, Matthew 18, to do that. Okay? The healing house is all cleaned out now. Now we're starting on the plumbing. And then we're going to the electrical and then just whittle it down from there. We're gonna, you can park over there now if you want to. And we're going to turn the whole thing into a parking lot. And, Add additional parts. Uh, when are you guys doing all that stuff? When you need help? What, like, what days? Are you oh well, mm, usually Tuesdays and Thursdays or Saturdays. Yeah, if you can help out, that would be great. Yeah, the plumber is coming Tuesday, I believe. So and then we can elect. We got it. We need another electrical panel, whole new electrical panel. All that stuff has to be done. It's a big project, but. Uh, we're going to use it as a Holy Ghost hotel for people from out of state who don't have any money to come here and can't afford a hotel. So they'll come here for a few days, get healed and delivered, and then go back home and open up their terror cell. That's the theory behind it. I need a manager to run the place, though. So I've been praying about that from day one. I need a resident manager. You'll have your own room. All that stuff. There's a manager's side, and then the other side will the people will be standing on the other side of the house in the other two bedrooms. Okay, so be praying about that for us, if you would. Tomorrow I will be here, along with Vivian and the crew, for our children's deliverance training at nine o'clock, ten o'clock. The service starts tomorrow. Thank you for your donations. The donation boxes are on the door, so when you walk out, you can. Uh, Bless the ministry. We thank you for your offerings and your tithes. God bless you for all that. <clears throat> hey, the devil's got America in big trouble. And his main focus always is God's word. If he can defeat God's word in the eyes of Christians, uh, he can win. And he's doing it easily here in America. And here's one of his greatest tricks. He complicates the gospel and decades ago centuries ago the devil came up with a great idea because unlike Christians the devil thinks ahead <clears throat> he's always thinking ahead Christians know they're kind of like horses with blinders they only see where they're going right now they're not thinking ahead the devil's not like that he doesn't have blinders on him he thinks ahead and Thinking down the road in the United States of America hundreds of years ago, 150 or something, he started to develop Bible colleges and seminaries 
and Bible scholars. He kind of invented them. What was he doing there? I'll show you. He was complicating the gospel. He was training Americans to think too much about it, to study too much, to analyze it too much. When you do that, the effectiveness of it declines. The gospel works fantastic, and the devil knows it. It kicks his face in constantly when it's used correctly. The devil's an easy beat. Demons are easy to defeat. People are easy to get saved. Healings and deliverances are easy. If you don't complicate the process. So what the devil did, he sent in intellectual Christians into the system. We call them Bible scholars. And that intellectuality filtered on down through the church. People started to think too much about the gospel. And if you do that, it doesn't work very well. First Corinthians chapter 1. Our rejoicing is this, Paul said. Our conscience testifies. In what? Simplicity and godly sincerity and not with fleshly wisdom. The devil is a spectacular deceiver. If he can get you to start thinking about the gospel and analyzing it and over-processing it, he will defeat you. It sounds like I'm teaching a false doctrine right now, doesn't it? I thought that too originally. But by the grace of God, we had our conversation in the world. That Greek word there for conversation is an astrophe. It means behavior. And more abundantly above you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, excapitao means to completely seduce somebody. Adam's sin was greater than Eve's. She was fooled. She actually believed it. The devil ran a line on her. He gave her a trail of crap. She actually believed it. She was fooled. Adam was thinking about it and went ahead anyway. Adam knew that was a crock of crap. Adam cost us our lives. Why? He was standing there watching the conversation, watching her get buffaloed knowing it was a false statement and didn't do anything about it. What was he doing there? Thinking too much. Eh? Thinking too much. Had he just used his childlike faith, we would have never been sick a day in our lives. We would never die. All humans would be completely healthy, wealthy, and wise. When you think too much about the gospel, it ruins it. Fleshly wisdom ruins everything. What? So your minds should not be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That's the Greek word, not in mind. It means your thoughts. Satan beats Christians through their thoughts. He blocks thoughts from getting in that are true, and he puts thoughts in your mind that are lies. Romans 16, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark those people that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine you learned, and avoid them. Translation, 
I came to you and taught you the simplicity of Christ. I taught you childlike faith. I showed you how easy it was to get miracles. Remember that day I was walking down the street and my shadow passed over you? Everybody got healed? Was that done through my great intellectual scholarship I learned in Judaism for 60 years? No. 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 The Galatians were going back to thinking about the gospel. Hmm. Yeah, why would we get rid of circumcision? Let's go back to that. You knew that was announced right out of the gate there. That can't feel good. Women don't care that much about that. See, people who think all the time like to start arguments about the gospel. Once you start arguing about it, the power of the gospel and the effectiveness dissipates. See, it's the thinkers that cause the division. They get in a fight over something. Once saved, always saved. Oh, God, that lit a bomb off. Everybody will be fighting until everybody's backslid. <laughs> Thinking leads to contentions and arguments, which then leads to offenses, which then leads to splits. Do we have any Baptists here tonight and saying amen? Splits, church split. Any Baptists here tonight with an amen? 60 different Baptists. What did the devil do? He outsmarted us saints. He's smarter than we are. He took the simplicity of the gospel and he split it up into denominations and destroyed its effectiveness, ruined it. There they are. Oh, that was the beginning of it. Hell came to breakfast. Here's another one. Here's a list of denominational families here. All these denominations have a series of intellectual beliefs. In fact, if you go to the website, they have a little section there that says, What We Believe. They won't put on there the truth. If you come to our, here's what we believe, but if you come to our church, you're not getting healed or delivered. And we don't really care you're there. And if you don't smell right, look right, we're going to shove you out the door. They don't put that on the we believe. That section was left off. If you think too much about the things of God, I didn't say meditate, I said think. The anointing dissipates out of it. Childlike faith brings miracles, not Bible scholars. It would be almost an impossible task, almost impossible to find a Bible scholar who walked in miracles. They're very rare. <laughs> very rare. Very rare. You know who walks in miracles most of the time? Regular folks. People who are not real, real smart. People with childlike faith. You know, A. A. Allen, Bill Branham, Or Roberts. These guys wasn't smart, were they? No. Nah, they didn't win any awards. They had no certificates. They had something Christians don't have. This wasn't their focus here, thinking about da, 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 nitpicking this. Da, 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 da. Did you know that in the secular psychiatric world, they have done major studies on people who are severely mentally ill? And one of the areas they've studied is religious ideation. Schizophrenics and bipolar, they all have this incredible demonic desire to know about God and the Bible. It's weird. Some schizophrenics can quote the Bible, half the chapters and half the verses are right. They're sicker than dogs. You ever met anybody can quote the Bible left and right? They drive you nuts, don't they? They know what's right, 
but they don't have any Holy Ghost power and they have no love. They never accomplish anything. They don't do anything. They're basically useless. Grandpa used to say some people are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good, he said. I didn't know what he meant until years later. Why are there so many churches? You ever wonder that? Paul hit it. These people think too much, they cause strife and divisions, and then there's a split. Welcome to the Baptists. Sixty different Baptist denominations are in the United States, there are sixty of them. What causes that? The Holy Ghost? <laughs> Far from it. Satan built this Baptist empire through divisions, conflicts, intellectualism, Bible scholars, seminary graduates, Bible school graduates. They all got together and had a big old intellectual fight. Boom, boom, boom. We win. We don't win. Oh, you don't agree with us? We're out the door. Bing! A new Baptist denomination popped up. Is that one any better than the last one? No. Nobody's getting healed or delivered there. These people do what? They do not serve the Lord Jesus. Check this out. Serve there is the Greek word duleuo. It means to be a slave. See, people that have Holy Ghost power are actually slaves of God. Check it out. Slaves don't make their own decisions. All right. Slaves don't think and run the show. Right. Thinking Christians, nitpicking Christians, they're spiritual failures with great Bible knowledge. I've had mental people, mentally ill people come into my office for counseling, quoting the Bible to me, <laughs> telling me what I ought to be doing. <laughs> I called my therapist and say, hey, am I mentally ill? <laughs> you see, a slave, a slave carries the anointing of God because they don't overthink the process. Slaves aren't in charge. They're not the boss. If you're an intellectual Christian, you come up with great divine revelations. Flat Earth theory. Oh, the Earth is flat. Oh my God, let me think about that. Let me find some scriptures to prove that so they dig in and twist. These people aren't slaves of the Holy Ghost. They're intellectual Christian giants who amount to nothing in the real world. In the scholarly world, they're fantastic. Oh, they're great to hear. I like to hear them. I like to listen to a Bible scholar. I sit and listen to them. I take notes. Oh, that's interesting. That's fascinating. In the real world, though, people need help. You don't get any help from a crackpot, goofed out Bible scholar. Well, this word in Aramaic meant that, and then when it went to the Greek, and then this went, Guess a rat's fanny, what you think? I'm dying over here. Somebody's got cancer. Somebody's going to hell. Somebody. Good are you? You know, Bible scholar, like, you need another coal sore in your mouth. <laughs> what? By good works, fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Oh, man. People who are really intelligent see the simplicity of Christ. The simple people get overrun by the ones that are thinking. Yeah, in America we call it marketing. They have marketing in South Africa, John. Marketing is an intellectual event. I think about what I got to do to get you to buy this crap. What do I got to say? What do I got to show you? How do I need to present it? It's all mind games. The marketing is all lies. 
It's a vast majority of it's a lie. You ever seen ads for vitamins? You believe that? Have you ever seen a vitamin ad? You'd swear you could grow a limb back from listening. <laughs> That vitamin stuff's crap. None of that stuff does you any good. It's all manufactured. It's marketing. It's all marketing. Why? They're thinking the simple are buying. We call it politics. Trump and Clinton running through the whole country. What were they doing? Hunting for us just to get a vote. I need a vote. Bush and Gore. Quick. What do they got to say? What do they got to do to get you to vote? They're thinking the simple are voting. Better move on before I get stoned. <laughs> I would love to have you wise so that which is good and simple concerning evil. Here's one of the devil's great ploys. He debates what's right and wrong. When in fact, you got a conscience from when you were conceived in the womb. So did you, so did you. And God gave you a conscience and you have an innate ability until you sear it to know what's right and wrong. You don't need to read a book on it. You know it's wrong to say something to her or do something to her. That hurts her. You know that. You don't need a book to read that. Keep it simple, stupid. You'll get miracles you won't believe. If you keep it simple, the God of peace will sun tribo means to shatter. You know. If you think it through, your life is misery. Broken homes, broken jobs, layoffs, poverty, broken relationships, broken engagements. Bro wow, what are you doing? You're thinking it through too much. Because you're smart. Oh, that's a big, big move on the devil's part. Oh, he is a complimenting fiend. He dishes out compliments. It's unbelievable how much he compliments people. It's amazing. No one sees him doing that. No one sees it. All they hear is the negative stuff he says. Oh, no, he's, he's not that stupid. If he can get you to think you're more than you are and you know more than you do, he's got you right there. He'll start feeding your asinine ego. You'll start looking like a complete jackass to everybody that knows you except you. You won't be able to look in the mirror anymore. You'll see this fake person in there with a huge IQ. Oh, I'm so smart. As soon as you start seeing yourself as smart, you're headed down the primrose path. That's what Grandpa taught me. I never did know what a primrose path was. I still don't. It just sounded good. <laughs> if you use the simplicity of the glorious gospel of Christ, and I'm going to prove it to you, you will shatter, centribo, shatter the devil in your life. You're crushing. Come on. The simplicity of Christ shatter any addiction known to man, any sickness. You think about it too much, ah, you got to get back to the drug treatment center. Get around the people who are thinking about your illnesses. Medical problem, oh, think about it too much. Got to get to the thinkers, doctors, nurses. What's the benefit the devil has of complicating the gospel? Well, he makes money off of it. If you come up with some kooky theory of Christianity, you could market it and sell it and make a limo payment. For example, these. Have you ever heard of these? Oh, these are really important theologies. These, are, these things are what they call in the Christian world deep. That's what we need is deep. Right old paragraph. Well, that's deep. Courts of heaven. Oh, I got to learn how to go to the courts of heaven. That's deep. 
Oh, I want to be a super apostle. Where's that book? Where's that super apostle book? Don't bother reading it, fool. What we're doing now is praying just for you to make it home without sinning from here. That's what we're praying. We want to pray you'll get home without starting to fight with your wife here. We just want you to get two, two hours away from here without sinning, okay? Yeah, I'll sell that book next week. Get a CD for you. How to make it home without sinning. There you go. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah, Mike is deep. Oh, Mike's a killer. Oh, ladder rail. I got to get some of that. I'm, I need to get soaked. I'm soaking. Dominionism. Yeah, I want to be a dominator. Oh, this is great. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, I want to be a manifested son of God. I want to be a God. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, I want to travel out of my body and go to India and pray for people. I can't wait. How do you do that? I send a CD in a book. I'll get it for you. Aren't you catching this? Don't you see if you complicate this crap, come up with a new theory, you can market it Pay for a mansion and a limo, but you're not going to really help anybody. See, the simplicity of Christ is the glorious gospel of Christ. That brings miracles. You want more deepness? Hey, I'm here to, I'm here to please. People come here for deep. Teleportation. Gosh, that's great. I'm going to pray and get teleportation anointing. I'm going to go over to India and speak at a conference while I'm still here. Oh. I can't wait to do that. Oh, God. My dream in life is to get on Sid Roth. I'm going to teleport to Maine and preach and then do, go to Sudan, heal the sick while I'm in New Jersey. It doesn't matter what you believe or what you come up with, Sid Roth will put you on that program and sell a book and a tape on your new Christian theory. I am not joking. Anything you can come up with. Go deep. Oh, here's an old one. Jesus and the Father are the same person. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. When you're in the Garden of Gethsemane and praying to yourself, that's, that's great. Let me think about that. Jesus praying to himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm going to focus on that and think about that for a while. Uh, I need a book. I need a tape. It's not coming in. you got to be kidding me. Prosperity lies. Those are old. All these fake miracles that do absolutely no good. I call them useless miracles. You know, they're, they're absolutely a complete. Two days later, they're back in their old miserable lives. You know, they leave the, oh, look at this oil. Oh, my God, this oil is great. I got oil pouring on my face. I'm going to run down my crotch. <laughs> what possible good is oil running down your crotch going to do to these people over here who have emotionally illnesses, mental illnesses, and physical illnesses? Why don't you wipe your crotch and then go over and pray for them? <laughs> oh, that's deep. Where's that CD? <laughs> Lori's got it. It's in the... <laughs> oh, flat earth. Flat earth goes for flat heads. Oh, God, here's a problem I had last week. A Nephilim out in the parking lot following me in. The... Oh, serpent sex. That's a great one. I need to study that. I'm going to get those CDs. Okay. Golly. Oh, t hell. Hell's an inconvenient thought, so let's come up with a new doctrine, sell the books and tapes on the thing. Let's do it. Hell's temporary. Hell doesn't exist. Oh, that's great. Hell. God, where's Sid Roth when you need the guy? I'll prove, I'll prove everything I'm saying here tonight. Check it out. John chapter 8. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came to the temple. All the people came to him. He sat down and taught them. The scribes and Pharisees brought in a woman. What's the devil doing there? Hey, whenever you head down this road of the simplicity of Christ, the devil will always try to interrupt you. He'll send some kooky relative, some cracked up whack job at work, some ex-spouse, some ex-fiance. Somebody will pop in and your mind will deviate from the simplicity of Christ to some 
issue staring you in the face right now. Jesus, no different. No different. He's teaching in there. He's, really, he's giving them divine revelations. And the devil goes, hey, got to stop that. What do we need here? Think about it. We got somebody violating our religion over here. Bring them in and interrupt the simplicity of Christ. Oh, they bring a gune, a wife. Some, some wife is, is in, in bed with another guy, so they let him off and they bring her in. They throw her in the men and interrupt the whole teaching. You ever notice things start to be going right for you for a little while and suddenly something interrupts it? Something always happens. He says, teacher, uh, he said, teacher, this woman, this gune, this wife, was taken in adultery in the very act we caught her in bed with a guy. Moses said she should be stoned. That's true. There's the scripture that said she should be stoned. And they said this, Pirazzo, to test him. So they might have something to accuse him. Well, Jesus is in deep trouble now. They got him. They think between a rock and a hard place. If he contradicts Moses' law, oh, he never makes it to the cross. They'll stone him. Yeah. But his mission from Father was to bring the glorious gospel of grace, replacing Moses' law. So he's got to figure this out. Let me tell you, sir. You got stuff jacked up in your life. The Holy Ghost got that thing figured out before you got jacked. Amen. The Holy Ghost saw this interruption coming a century earlier. Oh, he's on top of it. So they says to him, what are you saying? Jesus then, kupto, that means to bend forward. He bends forward and he starts writing in the, in the finger on the ground. Like he never hurt anybody. And then it says, he, they continued asking him. They're interrupting him twice. Okay. First he's teaching, then they interrupt the teaching. Now he's writing on the ground, and they're not reading that, they're interrupting it. See? You, can always, you always know you're dealing with someone with low self-esteem and a low self-concept. If you're trying to help them, they keep interrupting you. We call that marriage. <laughs> you're talking to the person, you're trying to get your point across, and it's a valid point, but they keep interrupting you. Why? They don't want to hear it. They're not interrupting you because they're psychos. They, they sense you're about to make a point that's valid, and they want to cut the thing off. So they send in a woman in adultery. They yell. They're talking to him. He's right on the ground. After he says to them, hey, I've got to get the gospel of grace in here because we're placing the law of Moses. And if I come out against Moses, I'm sunk. So the Holy Ghost doesn't end around, which he always does on the devil. He's got the devil's end already around before you got in trouble. That's deep. <laughs> Brother Mike, where's it? Lori has them in the bookstore. They're end around CDs. And then suddenly, they start to read what he's written on the ground. Oh, man. He's writing people's names on the ground, and he puts their major sin there. Thief, Jacob, adulterer, Harry, <laughs> child molester. Harry's standing right there. Jacob's standing right there. All of a sudden, they look at what he's writing, and the Holy Ghost then starts to do something with what? Your conscience. When you start to affect people's conscience, you always affect the older ones before the younger ones. Because the older ones have experience, the younger ones don't have. They start to leave. There it is. Starting at the old folks go, oh, 
Jacob saw that written there, thief. He's out the door. Amen. Well, the Bible says the woman was left alone, the wife standing in the midst. Not of the people, but the disciples stayed there. They didn't leave. He looks up and he sees no one. He says, woman, where are your categories? Where are those people who are filing complaints against you? There isn't one person in this room, not one person on YouTube, that hasn't had over the course of their life a literal rack of complaints filed against them by other people. You can't find one person unless it's an infant. Anybody who's been around for any period of time has a rack of complaints. Anybody my age has got two racks. <laughs> don't you see the simplicity of this story if you don't overthink the darn thing? Look at this revelation here about human conscience. Look at the revelation here about simple grace. God's grace. Look at the little, the concept of love in this story. It's so simple, so easy to see if you don't put a scholarly view on it. Look at that simple lesson on hypocrisy and how horrible religion is. Judaism had become a scum religion. By Jehovah? Oh, far from it. The law is perfect and good. The people practicing Judaism were phonies, fakes, liars, and hypocrites. They had ruined it. And the Gentiles mocked Jews because of their hypocrisy. Nobody likes a hypocrite. Yeah. If I actually did show up here with a guitar, <laughs> the ladies' seminar, no one would stay. <laughs> and no one would come back. It'd be all over the internet. I mean, Channel 3 News had even come down here. Did you show up at a women's Bible study naked with a guitar and you can't even play the guitar? They, no one would have mentioned the nakedness. They said, What are you doing standing up there with a the guitar and you can't play a guitar? Are you an idiot? You stupid? Get some training. Think about it, fool. <laughs> well, hasn't anybody, buddy, Catacrino, brought judgment down upon you? Where, where, are, where are the people bringing judgment down upon you? Don't you see the sim simplicity here? God is not judging you like people do. God is not your spouse. God's not your parents. God's not your relatives. He's not bringing judgment down upon you. You got grace. How do you know that? Because I didn't overthink the story. You mean nobody's bringing judgment down upon you? She said, nobody. Jesus said, well, I'm not going to bring judgment upon you. Grace, replacing law. So that you don't get stoned again. The simple concept of repentance is in the story. You know why your life sucks? You never changed. Why? You didn't read the story unless you thought about it too much. Look, wait a minute. I've got to change. I just had a miraculous divine revelation. Why? Because I thought about the story the way God wanted me to think about it. Why does the Holy Ghost put these stories in here? Second grade reading level. Why is he doing it? He knows the devil is going to try to complicate everything he does. Yeah. I can't prove this, but I kind of believe it myself. That woman there was one of the women at Calvary when he died. They said there was a woman standing afar off. Remember that? Remember that part? I think, I can't prove this. Don't send me an email. I think that woman was in that group. 
standing afar off. I think, I can't prove this, I think she stopped committing adultery. I think she saw that moment, not intellectually, but spiritually. This is my one moment to change my life forever. I got grace from God. I'm not going back to my vomit. I think she was there. I believe that. That's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. But Jesus said, look, I love you. Here's grace, but change. We need a PhD from Harvard Religion to come help the people at the Deliverance Center. I wouldn't let the fool in the door. Well, I got enough problems here. Demons running around. We need a Bible scholar running around. Are you kidding me? Do you need a Bible scholar to figure that one out? I don't think so. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's so simple. Where are your condemners? Where are yours? Where are yours? What's their names? Name me one. You name one. Everybody. You hear that? This story is built by the Holy Ghost for that beautiful woman sitting right there. God himself in this simple story is telling that woman right in there, I am not condemning you. Where's that CD? You don't need a CD, fool. There it is. Change. Change. Thank you, Lord. That girl right there. See that girl sitting right there? People have criticized her from when she was a kid. They nitpick her. They find fault against her. Father is telling her through this story, this story was made and built for that woman. God is not doing that. That's people doing that. That's the devil doing that. That's not me doing it. Where are your catacrino? Where are the people condemning you and bringing judgment upon you? Where are they? She says they're not here, Lord. Well, neither do I condemn you. Change. John, right? Change. Change. Well, at least the YouTubers know this is good preaching. <laughs> John 5. There was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem by the uh, sheep market. Mistranslated, mistranslated there. Probaticus is a gate. Sheep gate. And a uh, pool was there. Colin Bethro was there. A diving pool. Okay, that was a Greek word used to describe a big pool. We would use the term Olympic pool. Not a pool in your backyard, unless you're a TV preacher. But a, the city pool, okay, has a big pool. That's what this is. City pool. <laughs> and it says... Called in Hebrew, Bethesda, which means the house of mercy. It has five porches, diving porches. In these were a great multitude of impotent folk. Some of them were blind. Some of them were kolos. What's that? Chester, gun smoke. That's a funny joke, but nobody knows, A, who Chester is or what gun smoke is. Got to be my age to get that. You never heard of that. Chester was the guy on gun smoke that was his sidekick who limped. <laughs> and they were all sitting there withered means obviously anorexia waiting for the moving of the water it says for uh, here's the picture of it see the diving porches there see the gate down there see those things they're all torn down now but there's a watch this here's the gate that came their pool was down there the sheep were brought into Jerusalem to sell through the sheep gate it was near the city pool so to speak. There's a picture of it. 
an angel went down a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. Whoever first stepped in was made whole of whatever disease his hand. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know, but I think God was trying to send us a, a pre-gospel message. A casual approach to the Holy Ghost does not work. I think that might have been it. I'm not sure. See, the person that got in first was the more motivated, the one who planned the most, the one, the one who watched carefully. And it's funny, translating that into Christianity, you can see clearly that your weaker Christians you're Christians that are losers, Christians that don't have the anointing, Christians that have all kinds of problems in their lives and they're all jacked up. They're not looking for the moving in the water first. You notice that? They're, they're slackers. The first person who was planning, watching, focused on their game got into that water and whoever got in first, the Bible says this... Uh, Water turned into some kind of healing miracle, and they were made whole. Well, there was a guy there for 38 years. You know the story. And he'd been there a long time. Jesus said, he said, will you be made whole? Thalo, do you want to be, Hoges, do you want to be healthy again? Right? The question appears nonsensical. It actually is not. Many Christians do not want to get better. They don't want to be well, they lose their social security. They don't want to be well, they'll lose sympathy from others. They don't want to be well, self-pity has soaked in. They like seeing themselves as a victim. Some people don't want to be well because they're still pissed off at God. They're mad at Him. They prayed this way, they believed that way, it didn't go the way they expected, and so they got mad at Him. Some people want to stay mad. They don't want to forgive. Oh, ask people who got divorces. Ask people in custody battles. They don't want to forgive. Why? Hate is a powerful motivator to get you through the divorce process and get them kids. Move on. Do you want to be healthy? Jesus said, what was he doing? He was checking the temperature of the guy's water. Wouldn't that have been a logical thought of yours? It would have me. How long have you been here? 38 years. Let me, let me run down my list here. Nobody here to help you. You don't have any friends. You're set self-pity. You don't want to be healed. You do want to be healed, but you can't make it. You're in the wrong spot. You're strategic. There's a laundry list of thoughts there of why a guy would be there for 38 years. What's this, what's this saying? Well, if you don't think about it too much, your want to is the biggest thing to God. That's the first thing God looks at in a person. Their want to her. Do you really want me? Do you really want to be healed? Do you really want to fix your family? Do you really want to get off porn? Do you really want the anointing? Do you really want to heal the sick people? Do you really want to be well? If you don't think about it too much, boy, that hits you right in the face. That's the first question he asked him. Do you want? What's that translate to? Ha! Free will. What was he doing there? Checking, checking the temperature of his free will. Some people like their demons. Politicians do. They get them elected. TV preachers do. They get millions coming in. They like their demons. They don't want to get rid of them. The guy says, hey, what do you mean do I want to be healed? Look, here's the problem. 
when the water is troubled, I don't have anybody who cares about me. Nobody cares. You listening? Nobody cares. What happens to a person psychologically when nobody cares over a protracted period of time? Ma'am, you're teaching next week. Self-pity sets in. Guess what happens? They give up. They develop low self-esteem. They have a low sense of self. What's the story telling you here? God sees you as wonderful. Jesus never said another word after he heard that. Oh, nobody cares about you? Watch this boy. <laughs> Father cares. See the Holy Ghost touching that girl right there? That girl is getting delivered tonight, and other people who don't want to, you go home sick. Enjoy your trip home. I don't have anybody when the water trouble, nobody cares about me. On top of that, while I'm coming, these other disabled people don't care about me either. No kidding. They're desperate to get here. They're trying to get in. Another steps down before me. We went over this two weeks ago. Alos is the Greek word. means another of similar kind and quality. He means another disabled person. Not another attendant or not another person. And Jesus said, hey, I get it. I care about you. They don't care about you, disabled people. Your friends don't care about you. And your relatives don't care about you. I care about you. See that? See, if you're a Bible scholar, you can't catch any of this. You don't get any of it. And you don't apply it to anybody. You can't help anybody. But if you use the simplicity of Christ, you get the whole message and the Holy Ghost moves. <laughs> oh, you keep it simple. The Spirit of God moves naturally. He took up his bed and walked like that gal will tonight. She'll just get up and walk and be in. Well, the religious people got him again. Hey, religion. Religion is the Ebola of humanity. It's the worst thing that ever hit the human race, in my opinion. The worst thing. Religion is a monstrous suck. It's the worst thing there is. Because it makes you think about religious things, and true religion is love. True religion is the simple things, faith, compassion, love, people. That's a great teaching right here. Listen to this. These verses are so good, they're unbelievable. If you don't overthink them, smarty pants. You want to get jacked up in religion and get involved? That's your business, but you're not going to really help anybody. Because the Holy Ghost is the only person who can help anybody, and he needs it simple. Keep it simple. That's why I wrote it simple. Notice how simple these stories are? I said, well, this isn't scholarly material. <laughs> That's because you're a spiritual fool. This stuff is deep beyond your comprehension. Well, then get healed and take up your bed and walk. I care about you. I said, hey, what are you doing? Taking out your bed and walking around. Sabbath day. And it says, he that was healed, Edu, did not see who it was that healed him. Boy, there's an incredible message there. If you're a TV preacher, you want your name splattered everywhere. It's called marketing. Jesus heals a guy and bolts. What kind of story is that? Oh, man. The Holy Ghost likes humble people. He likes people who are not big shots. He likes simple folks, simple faith, things like compassion, little things like love. 
If you think too much, those things get hard. They're hard to do. He hid himself away and they later found him in the temple. And guess what? Jesus drops another bomb on us. We need a scholar for this? I don't think so. I care about you. I just healed you. You told me nobody else cared about you. I did. But listen, when the Holy Ghost comes to you, there's a responsibility there. This isn't a freebie. This isn't a coupon. No. No, the Holy Ghost, the most precious thing in the world, he has both of them. The broken body of Christ, the blood of Jesus, he carries them with him. He's the only person that has them. You turn your back on him, you're not interested, you want to overthink it, you get nothing from God. Zero. Listen, sir, you got healed. There's a responsibility here. What responsibility is that? Change. Change. Change your lifestyle, change your friends, change your attitude, change what you're doing, change how you think. Stop doing some things, start doing some other things. What's the simple message here? How, how clear can it be? You can get healed and then you can lose your healing. You can get delivered and then you can lose your deliverance if you don't change. You can't get delivered from drugs. Live over the crack house. No, no, the devil's not going to allow that. You got to move out of your stinking environment and change. Where'd you get that? That's deep. Sin no more, lest a Man, now what could be worse than being disabled for 38 years? Going to hell is much worse. If that guy went to hell to this day, 2,000 years later, the only thought that runs through his mind now, I'd give anything to be back at the pool of Bethesda, disabled. When you go to hell, you'd give anything to be back here, regardless of your circumstances. The man departed and told the Jews it was Jesus. The guy stabs him in the back. Oh, there's a revelation here you can't believe. Isn't it so simple and clear? People that get miracles from God, some of them are ingrates. Some of them are ingrates. True story. Guy comes to me one time. He says, hey, I'm backslidden. I need help. I said, great. No problem. Come on in. When I was serving God when I was young, I got my girlfriend pregnant. I was 16 at the time. And I had just gotten saved. And the guy said, he spent the next two nights praying and asking God to forgive him and to fix it. And I'm going, I don't know how you fix that, but let me keep listening. You ever had somebody tell you a story and you go, you don't interrupt them because you want to hear the rest of it? His girlfriend calls him two days later and she said to him, God answered your prayer. My period started again. Hey, I'm just telling you the story. He went back to have an intercourse with her within a week. That's that's a true story. What's the deal? 
He's a typical Christian. <clears throat> you wouldn't believe how many Christians God bailed out of the toughest spot, the rottenest situation, divorce, bankruptcy, sickness, illness, something, a miracle happened. They couldn't believe it. Oh my God, it's unreal. They went right back into. This guy did it. He runs to the Jews. He knew they were mad at him. They were saying to him, who, who, you're carrying your bed. What are you doing? What are you, nuts? That wasn't a pleasant conversation. They were rebuking that guy because they're religious. Religion always rebukes people and straightens their fannies out. There's no grace in religion. It's a nitpicking system. Finding fault with people. Trying to get them to straighten up. Fly right. Oh, it was because he was on the Sabbath day. Wow, our religion says this. Caring for people is outside of that. Here's our Sabbath. We care about you outside of that. What was Jesus saying? It's so simple, isn't it? The dispensation of law has ended. The dispensation of grace is here. I'm healing these people on the Sabbath. What could be a clearer message? Jehovah and Isaiah chapter 1 said that he was going to get rid of this system. He hated it. Why? They had polluted it. They were hypocrites. Isaiah chapter 1 says it. The Sabbath is going. Vain oblations. It is an abomination to me. Coming into my temple, going through all these rituals, all these forms, Sabbaths, assemblies, it's iniquity. God never planned to keep the law. The law was set up as a schoolmaster to drive you to grace, Paul said. The law was set up to show you that you are a sinner and you cannot save yourself. You cannot be good enough for God. It's impossible. You can't be perfect. How do you know that? The law proved it. The law was never set up to be permanent. It was always a temporary system, like a teacher, to drive you to Christ. Go that way. Go to grace. Jehovah didn't want to keep the law. He said, it's, this is crazy. You're, you've ruined it. Hosea chapter 2, I will cause all her myrrh to cease, her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbaths, her solemn feminine. They were all planning, Jehovah had always planned to bring it to an end. Now you can get healed any day of the week. Praise God. Every day of the week is a Sabbath. Christ is your Sabbath. He's killing it. John 5, Jesus said, my father works and I work. Well, now the Jews are really mad at him because that violated their religion. If you violate somebody's doctrinal beliefs, they'll come out of their chair swinging at you. I had some lady on Facebook this week tear me a new one. Man, I got in trouble big time. I was explaining, I don't even remember the conversation or how I got into it, but I was telling these people, listen to Sozo. Sozo is a deliverance system. Somebody made up the Sozo deliverance system. It's a good system. It's got a lot, a lot of good stuff in it and a lot of good people in it. But I was saying, hey, that thing's got deficits in it. There's, there's holes in that system. And I've had you know, dozens of people come see me after they'd been through Sozo, some of them multiple times. Same thing with cleansing streams. My record is six. I had a guy who had been through cleansing dreams six times, came to see me to get delivered. And I was explaining that they're good systems and they're good people running them, but they have deficiencies in their system. There's holes in the boat. Oh, you would have thought I insulted the Pope. <laughs> Holy smoke. And then I finally said, the, uh, Facebook, man, I said, ma'am, listen, you're taking offenses for no reason. I like those people. I help them every time they come in. I got no problem with it. 
I said, no deliverance system is perfect. Neither is mine. I don't do everything right all the time. I screw stuff up. Well, you would have thought I was some supernatural being from quadrant three of universe four. <laughs> they couldn't believe that I actually admitted I made mistakes. Because yeah. nobody, everybody's so insecure and has low, such low self-esteem, particularly people in the ministry, they can't admit that. Nobody can admit that, see? And since I'm not a minister or a teacher or a preacher, I, I'm not encumbered by that asininity. I'm just a counselor and a regular person. So I just give it, yo, heave hope. I said, listen, I got problems. I can, I'm not a divine person. I'm just a regular person. Nobody can believe I said it. I was actually lying. Everything I do is perfectly, but I didn't want to tell her. How, I didn't want to tell her. Uh, at least that's what Kelly told me. And uh, <laughs> it says here, Jesus made himself equal with God. Oh my God! So they got him twice. They said, "You're you're you're claiming to be this, and you're violating the Sabbath." Oh, that did it. Boom! He's a dead man. Luke twenty, Luke uh, seventeen. As he entered a village. There met him ten lever, lepers, which stood afar off. They have to stand afar off. Leviticus 45 required lepers in the law of Moses to be out the door. You had to live outside of town. You weren't allowed to be around any people. So nobody knows what rejection feels like more than a leper. He's got you and I beat. I mean, it's mass rejection. In addition to that, this story is fantastic because it gives you a glimpse into the life of desperate people psychologically. It's fantastic. Watch this. They lifted up their voices. They had to. They weren't allowed to come up and talk to him. They had to be way over there. So they're yelling at him. And they didn't, instead of didaskalos, they said epistatus, which means commander or boss or manager or something, not teacher. Hey, boss. Eliyahu, have compassion on us. Wow. Non-religious people who are in deep trouble don't care about religion and complicated things. They don't want intellectual pursuits of God. They're not interested in that. Desperate people are brought down to their simplest common denominator. What is that? I just want somebody to have compassion on me. And it says here, when he saw them, Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Why? Because you can't get healed if you don't. No, he was giving the priests the uh, testimony that God has visited his people. Go show the priest because they need to hear that the Holy Ghost is here. Good idea. We call it witnessing. Came to pass as they went. Oh my goodness. So simple. Sitting on your fanny there, staring at God, isn't going to get you a cotton picking thing. You can just sit there forever. You can sit there for the rest of your life doing nothing. You can sit around watching people getting healed left and right, and you sit there with nothing for the rest of your life. You got to do something. You got to step out on your faith. As they went, translation, they heard the word of the Lord, they obeyed it, and they went. Third grade. Can it be any simpler than this? It, it Really, it can't be. They were, Gathar Idzo, made clean. One of them, when he saw he was healed, Yaomai means cured, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. One out of ten. That would be what? What percent is that? Ten percent. Then he falls down on his face giving thanks. American Christians get nothing from God. Why? They intellectualize these verses. 
Let me think about this. Oh, man. Come on, fool. Had you just read that and done that, fallen down on your face, given thanks, you'd have gotten your miracle years ago. Thought about it too much, got too many CDs, too many DVDs, got the book on it. Had to think about it all the time. Oh, that's great. Let me focus on that. Oh. <laughs> Notice something funny about this guy, though. He was a Samaritan. Unbelievable. The other guys that got healed were probably Jews. This guy was a Samaritan. Jews hate Samaritans. Samaritans hate Jews. Listen, when you've been reduced to your common denominator and you're desperate, nobody cares about where you're from, what race you are, what sex you are, where you were raised, what you believe, what your parents believe, what association you're with, who you join. Nobody cares about that. You're just accepted. The other Jews didn't care. The guy was a Samaritan. They were all dying of leprosy. That's the only thing that mattered. What was the story telling you? Lepers have a moment of clarity. Christians don't have. Now they're too busy thinking about it. You know what your problem is? You've never been brought to a point of total desperation. You're not desperate. Because when you're desperate, all these other things just fall off. Translation, who cares? I'm black. I'm white. When you're desperate, nobody cares what your skin color is. That's just for people who think. What's God telling you here? <laughs> Doesn't matter who you are. As you go, you get healed. What's the story telling you? God is no respecter of persons. What's the story telling you? It's so simple. You got to do something to activate and trigger the moving of the Spirit. What do you got to do? Let me think about that. Brother Michael, reveal it to me. Mm, falling down, giving thanks. Wow, Brother Mike, he's got a master's degree. <laughs> he's a genius. No, full second grade. I learned how to read English. I'm reading it now. It's so simple. God don't care where you're from, what your skin color is, what your sex is. As you go, everybody gets healed. The people that sit and do nothing, none of them get healed. Thirty-eight years you've been sitting there, got a porn addiction. Gave up long ago. Why? He could have been healed years ago. Desperation. Hating it. You know why people don't repent of their sin? They like it. Yeah, that's right. They do. Not all sins. Some sins. Yeah. Yelling at a relative. They don't repent of it. You know why? They like it. It's called venting. <laughs> it feels good to tell that idiot off. We told you how many times do I have to... You know, every time you yell at that person, you're reinforcing their negative behaviors. You're killing yourself. I'm killing myself. You're exercising your vocal cords, but you're spiritually killing yourself by yelling at that person. Giving thanks. Oh, that's deep. Oh, man. Dude, no, it isn't. You know why you backslid? 
You lost your gratefulness. You weren't grateful anymore. If you focus on all this crap in your life and all this negativity from these people and all the people that are criticizing you and all the people that are condemning you, you'll lose your joy. As soon as you lose your joy, all this crap matters. As soon as it all matters, you start to backslide. You start to develop self-pity. You start to nitpick yourself. You start to be critical of yourself. Well, they're right, I guess. I said this and I did that. Where are your accusers, Jesus said. They're not here, Lord. Well, neither do I condemn you. Change. You're healed. The story is so simple. Where are the ten? Weren't there ten? Where's the nine? The nine is a, the rest of the American Christians. Ninety percent of them are me blessings. Give me me me. Where's my blessing? Help me. Ninety percent of them are bitter. Ninety percent of them are angry at God. Ninety percent of them like their sin. Ten percent are grateful. It's the smaller percent that gets all the miracles. You ever notice that? It's only a small percent of people who are faith healers. You ever notice that? And that was never the design by the Holy Ghost. Every born-again Christian is a faith healer to God. Not in our society. Oh, I need to get somebody to get a special word. I'm, I'm revealing special words to you tonight. <laughs> See, all of you, all of you have got to understand, I've given you so many good words that it's a sin if I'm not in your will. <laughs> That's right, a bunch of sinners over here. Dude, where are the nine? How did you get in with the nine? Oh man, that question was so prophetic. I'm asking you a question. How did you get in with the nine? How'd you get in that group? You lost your thankfulness. So easy. You lost your gratefulness and you transfer from the 10% to the 90%. It's so simple. It's Holy Ghost math. If you listen to everybody saying negative things to you, the devil will tell you God feels the same way about you. The person then will start thinking, my God, God's got a problem with me too. Right? That happens all the time. It finally sinks in. I suck. You ever hear Joel Osteen on Sunday morning? This guy hears, he, he, hears nothing but criticism from everybody all over the country. People can't stand this guy. The other half of the people absolutely love him. He's a complete mixed bag. You ever seen him on TV? You know how he survives? He never listens to it. He never listens to one word of it. If you say something negative about him, you send him an email, he will not read it. He does not look at it. That stuff's all screened out by his staff. I'm not joking. He actually said that. He said, I do not read any of that stuff. I do all that stuff screened out by my my staff people. Joel, you suck. No, that never got to him. If you send him a letter saying, hey, you are the most pathetic piece of scum, he will never read that letter. He'll never, you're writing a letter to no one. I'm not joking. I'm not pushing Joel Osteen and I, I'm saying, listen, that concept of listening to demons run you down all the time will cause you to lose sight of God's grace and his love for you. You'll start to think he's got a problem with you, and he does not. You can be caught with your pants down. 
literally and get mercy from God. I just read it to you. That story is the I got caught with my pants down story. It wasn't a rumor. They had her on Snapchat. <laughs> I mean, the proof was there. The proof is in that, the rest of that story. Neither do I condemn you. Change. This is good preaching, YouTubers. You're in the 90% tonight. But tonight, you're moving over to the 10%. That's what you're going to do. You know why? You want the anointing. You want to help others. You got good hearts. That's why you come here. He said to him, arise and go your way. Your faith has sozo delivered you. Arise. What do you mean arise? He was on his face here giving thanks. Have you ever done that? Wow. 90% of them have never done that. They don't care that much. Luke 19, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which means pure, which was chief among the publicans. He was, a, he was a regional manager of tax collectors, and he was rich. Those guys were skimmers. Today we call them politicians. They skim money off the top of everything, and this guy was the biggest load of pond scum in his neighborhood. All the Jews hated his guts because he was Collecting taxes from Jews and giving them to the Romans. That was treason to them. There's his house. This guy who everybody hated, his house survived 2,000 years or parts of it. See that? That's the ruins of his house. It says he sought to see Jesus. What's the story saying to you? Oh, it's so easy. You got to be a God seeker to get healed. You got to be a God hunter to get a miracle. Sitting there listening and learning, ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth will get you what? A sore fanny sitting in that chair all day. He sought to see Jesus, red flag. He couldn't come in because there were too many people there because he had a little short guy with small man syndrome. He ran before them and climbed up a sycamore tree. He was knowing he was going to pass that. Anyway, what's going on there? So simple. So simple, you don't need a Bible scholar. He's thinking about, I need to get to God. How am I going to get to him? I'm too short to get in. How can I overcome that deficiency? How can I get past that barrier? Oh, I'll run ahead, pluck, I'll click up the mulberry tree, then I'll look down, then I can see because I'm short. See, lazy, indifferent, uncaring people don't do that. They just sit there and want you to come up and heal them. They're healed. Oh, I can go home now. I don't have to change. I'll just get reinfected. I'll just lose my healing. No, you have to change your life to keep your healing. Oh, he runs ahead of him. He jumps up a, it wasn't a sycamore tree. They call them mulberry trees. This one's actually on one of your tours of Jerusalem. There you go. When you go over there, you can see that. See, there's a little sign there. I put that up there as a public service. You don't have to spend $4,500 to go. <laughs> <clears throat> when Jesus came to the place, he looks up in the tree. What do you mean? He looks up in the tree there and sees the scum of the neighborhood. It's so simple. God looks at scummy people. Why? To condemn them and run them in the ground? Quite the opposite. Father's looking for people everybody else hates. He could have looked at anybody that day. There was people all over the place. He looks up in the tree and sees the chief of the tax collectors. He's not only pond scum, he's super pond scum. Come down here. Hurry up. I'm eating at your house today. What's God telling you there? That's not that deep, is it? If everybody's rejected you, I want you at my house. It's so simple. It's so simple. Yeah. 
Nobody let him up to see him. He's short. They know who he is. Nobody likes him. They're not going to let him come down to the front and stand on the street and get a look. They wouldn't let him in. Nobody likes him. They hate him. You have relatives that don't like you. You have friends that they hate you. Don't tell me you don't because I know you do. So he had to figure out some way to do it. He was overcoming obstacles. You know what powerful Christians are like? They're like those fire trucks I, that came out when I was a kid, back in the 60s or whatever. You'd wind them up like this, and you put them down, and they go. And if they run into something, it would go that way. Then it goes, click. Then it would go that way. They were Zacchaeus trucks. I can't get in. No one likes me. No one will help me. No one's going to give me a break. I can't get down to the street. They despise me. Click. He go. I'll run down here. Click. I'll climb this tree. Click. You stayed down there and sat and self pity and nothingness. Not going to get you anywhere. Hey, it's time for you to make your move. He got, he leaped out of the tree, joyfully received him, took him home. He was going to be his guest. They said, oh gosh, the religious people, your nitpickers, your critical people, they will always be there because they're faithful. <laughs> people who don't like you are faithful. They will always criticize you. You can depend on it. You can bank on it. You can bet money on it. The devil is a very faithful person. Man, you screw up, he'll be right on top of you. And they said to about Jesus, they're whispering him, gossiping. Kataluo means he's sunk down to their level. They saw Zacchaeus as pond scum. Now they said Jesus had sunk down to pond scum level. Jesus is now like a stinking tax collector, supervisor. He doesn't just stink. He's a supervisor who stinks. He's got stank. <laughs> Don't you see the story? It's so simple. If you keep it simple, the, the stories are uplifting. The stories are encouraging. The stories are faithful. Way beyond Joel Osteen. He's an uplifting, happy, helping person. These stories go way beyond anything Joel Osteen. These things are divinely inspired. They're spectacular. Yes. Yes. Guess what happens to him? The guy gets saved. Don't you see the pattern? He got his miracle. What did he want? He had chronic guilt. He had chronic shame over his career, like a prostitute, like a drug dealer, like some of these people know what they're doing is wrong and they hate it, but in their minds, they have no way out. It's a simple matter of economics. The dying thief on the cross, they'd been told numerous times, stop stealing. You're going to get caught by the Romans. They'll kill you. He wouldn't stop in his mind. In his mind, he had to keep doing it. I don't see any other way to replace that revenue stream. I don't have any faith in God to replace it, so I have to do it. See, when you're down to the point where you have to do stuff and you're trying to control everything, you are setting yourself up for total failure. Zacchaeus does what? He gets saved. His conscience is restored. My goodness. Lord, half my goods I give to the poor. If I took anybody, I'll, I will restore it fourfold. What was he really saying? Well, in Exodus, you had to restore fourfold for a what? A sheep. If you stole a sheep, you had to give them four back. So if you didn't have any sheep, presumably you didn't because you wouldn't be stealing. 
you had to work until you could buy four sheep and you had to give four sheep back to this guy you stole a sheep from. What was more valuable than a sheep? Oxes. If you stole a guy's ox, now now you're really stealing something. Okay, you stole the you stole the guy's bike, you steal his car, that's different. You gotta give five ox back for one ox you stole. If it's a sheep, you get four. Guess what happened? Well, he says what happens here. The guy gets saved. He got what he wanted. All that shame, all that guilt, everything just lifted out of there. Wouldn't you like to get rid of that guilt and shame your family heaped on you? How about the shame and guilt you heaped on yourself all the years? Saying negative things about yourself, running yourself down. I'm no good. I should have done this one. What about all your regrets? Wouldn't it be great to get rid of all those? Why didn't I go here? Why didn't I go to school? Why didn't I marry this person? Why didn't I th take that job? How can I? Wouldn't it be great to get rid of all that? Oh, man. Well, wouldn't you want to give them four sheep back if you traded in all that guilt? One sheep for your guilt. Second one for your shame. Third one for your embarrassment. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> I've been a counselor for 35 years. <coughs> embarrassment is worth a lot. That's one of man's deep seated fears. Did you know that? Being publicly humiliated. Sends the fear of God through a human being. There are some exceptions. I got past that, but most people, they can't stand to be publicly humiliated. Wouldn't it be great to get rid of that as your third sheep? The embarrassment, your embarrassment of your in laws. And the family looks at you and goes, ah. Oh. You have family members that shake their heads like that? Whenever you see that shaking head thing at Thanksgiving, somebody showed up who's a loser. You don't even know who's at the door. If somebody sees them and they go like that, oh, that's, that person is, that's a total loser right there. Yeah, they're idiots. It's like the village idiot showed up. Ding dong. Look out. Oh. oh, shush, God. Oh, Bill, you answer it, man. I can't do it. He was one of those people. Don't you see that? Zach Zacchaeus was out of it. I got news for you, and it shouldn't be news. People that are out of it to others are in it with the Lord. People you think are out the door. Father welcomes in with a red carpet dripped in blood. There it is, Lord. Salvation came to Scum City. Thank God for that. I wouldn't have gotten saved. Luke 20, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those which were lost. Jesus said, I didn't lower myself to his level. I brought him up to mine. When they came to the place called Calvary, cranion means what? Cranium. Thank you. Golgotha. They crucified him, and they had two what? Okay, Gorgas. Those are criminals. One on the right hand, one on the left hand. All right? And then it says, Luke 23, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not edu, see what they're doing. They don't see it. See what? They saw him there, but they didn't see in the spirit world. They didn't understand what they were doing. 
And it says they parted his clothing and gambled it away, Psalms 22. And the people beholding, um, and the rulers were there, started to make fun of him. Oh, you've been made fun of so many times over the years, it's unbelievable. And some of you for good reason. And Jesus understands how you're feeling. Hey, you said you were the Messiah. You said you were the Son of God. What are you doing hanging up? What, what's your problem? What are you, nuts? This is not going the way I thought it was going to go. See, if you think about this stuff too much, you miss the spiritual points. They were thinking about it. And if it doesn't go the way you think, you then develop what? Duh. Disappointment. So you no longer trust God because it didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. The problem wasn't God. It was you. You had it all planned out in your mind and you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> did he just say what I thought he did God that's a sacrilege yeah you were wrong you had it planned out in your mind this is the way God is see that's what religion does these groups pair off and they say we think God's this way we think God's that way we think God's this way God's none of those ways he's only that way Hey, you're a failure. You're a screw-up, Jesus Christ. You're, you're, you're a failure. The soldiers are mocking, and they, ch they chimed in, too. People really are like sheep. Have you ever noticed that? If, if somebody's perceived to be lower, than, and then somebody starts saying something about it, other people not knowing exactly what's going on, they'll just chime in. Sports is like that. You've done it, haven't you? I have. You know, I used to go to Super Bowl parties for years. Loved them. Pounding down the hooch. Oh, that was fun. Slamming the beers. Watching the game. Ha! Highlight of humanity. Couldn't have gone any better for a sinner. Super Bowl party. Oh, they're the best. Even if you don't like either team, you're just there to socialize and pound Correct? Even if it's not your team, <clears throat> you don't care. So you're like these soldiers, they're looking around, these Jews are, are ripping on him, they're going, oh, okay, let's, it's not our team, but let's join in. The soldiers start mocking him. For, they had no reason to do it. <clears throat> so they give him what? Sour wine with barley. That is a what? That's a heavy intoxicant. That's a painkiller, right? It was their version of oxycodone. Anybody here on oxycodone? Anybody got any extras to spare? No, <laughs> skip it. It's sour wine with barley. You can get drunk quick on that. Saying, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself, foo. They wrote a subscription over there mocking him. That was a mocking subscription. That wasn't something honoring him. It was the mocking. <clears throat> One of the criminals said, if you're the Christ, save yourself. So the Super Bowl party, everybody now is cheering the touchdown, even if it's not their team. We, we've all done it. I did it for years. Because rarely is your team ever in the Super Bowl. There are only two teams left. You're not there to cheer your team because your team's never there. You're just there for the hooch. You're there for the hors d'oeuvres. You're there for the barbecue. Cool. Right? No. Jeez. I told you this was a deep study. If you be the Christ, save yourself or not, what's wrong with you? You're supposed to be the Savior, right? You're the Savior, but you're not saving anybody. But the other one rebuked him, says, don't you fear God? What's he telling you? Whenever the devil attacks you, he hits you this way, and then if it works, he then, what I call, piles on. He starts the Mayweather thing. You don't get hit with one shot. You get a series of blasts. When he sees the first one get through, then he moves in quicker. Bang, bang, bang. Right? That's how he works. He mobs you. Okleo is the Greek word 
for demons mobbing people. Said they were they were uh, oppressed by spirits. That means that they were mobbing them like it like uh, vultures on a kill. A cleo is what it means. That's what demons do. They they team up and jump on you. So if one relative's turning on you, they'll get the other ones to point fingers or support that one. They like to pile on. He says, "Hey, stop doing that." So the other criminal has what? He sees his, his conscience hits him. He says, hey, this is ridiculous. I'm in the same judgment as he is. We're going to die just like him. But, he says, we deserve to die. He doesn't because of our prasso. What's that? Oh, it's so simple to hear. So easy to see our practices. One sin doesn't normally get you in trouble. It's your lifestyle. Not Praying tonight is not going to get you in trouble one time. It's your lifestyle of not praying. Looking at two minutes of porn, that's not going to kill you. It's your practice of going back every time you feel sick, every time you feel low, every time somebody hurts you, every time you need comfort, every time you need to escape. It's not one beer. It's your practice of we didn't just steal one thing. We lived stealing stuff. We were criminals by definition. They practice what they preach. He hasn't done anything to deserve to be here. Oh, no, you see it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you'll face it and confess it, Father will forgive you. If you won't, he won't. If you won't face it, he won't. What's the guy doing? He's facing it. The story's so simple. Stop blaming other people. Stop blaming people for your issues. They should have, they should have, they should have, they should have. We should have, we should have. I didn't get, I didn't get, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. The, uh, stop it. Ninety percent of them blame somebody else. The 10%, they get healed. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Hey, you're going to be with me today in paradises, paradise. The other one, the other guy, went to hell. He's there now. Why? He kept blaming somebody else for his problems. He blamed the Romans for this is an unjust punishment for stealing. Wow, that just came off the front page of the paper today. Well, that's. That's too much punishment. We're not supposed to punish them that bad. You are supposed to not do that in the first place. You shouldn't even been around for considering any punishment. You should have changed first. It's so simple here. The guy admitted it. He faced it. He apologized. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how far an apology will go with God. I mean, a sincere one. Not the kind you give at work. Or at home. <clears throat> yeah, Your relative backs you into a corner, spouse. 
bang, 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 they hit you with five things you did wrong. You can't get out of them. So you give them one of those defensive moves. Well, I'm sorry. You get the shoulders down, the neck droops. You get the body language in it, see? Learn your body language. You can get out of stuff. I've done it. That's not an apology. That's just you trying to get out of it. Temporarily. I, what do I got to do to get that person to shut up? Do I need to apologize to get that person to shut up? I'll just do it. Because I don't want to be confronted with the truth anymore. And lies. Okay? Every time a relative reams you out, half of it's true, the other half's fabricated. You ever notice that? <laughs> Nobody had the guts to go with that one, but that's actually what happens. Half the stuff you're accused of by people is true. The other half of it's just false. It's fabrication. It's a devil piling on. So you give them a fan. No, if you have a sincere apology to God, you wouldn't believe the Holy Ghost. I have seen him jump on people just fast. See? I took all my Bible scholar books. I put them over here. And then I apologized and got a miracle. The temple was rent. Darkness over the face of land. Father, into your hand I commend my spirit, Jesus said. And he did what? Ecnuo. What's that mean? <sighs> Took his last breath. Each one of you sitting here will probably be there someday. I said probably. I'm hoping for the rapture. I said probably. I can't say for sure. But when you die, you take your last breath. And then it's too late to repent on the cross. It's too late to climb a tree and ask for a miracle. It's too late. Ecnuo. Gone. There's the tabernacle. It was torn in two. What did that mean? It's over now. The dispensation of law ends. The dispensation of grace starts. Eh? You ever seen that movie? Superman? Did you see that TV show? Anybody my age? Nobody? Well, when I was young, they had a TV show on. It's called Superman. It was on in the 50s. I used to watch it, late 50s, early 60s. And the guy's name was Steve, was it Steve Reeves or Steve Reeves, I believe. Yeah, what was his name? George Reeves. Steve Reeves. George Reeves. George Reeves, thank you. Who's, who's Steve Reeves? Hercules. Her Hercules, no, one Hercules. <laughs> Steve Reeves was the bodybuilder as Hercules, that guy's right. George Reeves was this guy's name. He killed himself. George Reeves was his name. He played Superman, right? Remember that? Yeah. A couple of people do. It sounded like it came from over here. Old people over here. <laughs> well, when it came time to save the day, he did what? Went into a phone booth and ripped his clothes off. Why? Is he a stripper? No, he was. He had a Superman outfit under his regular clothes. Oh, don't you get on? Oh, the Superman is now divinely deep. People look at you and they think that's what they see. That's not what they see. The real you is in there. Rip the temple. He ripped the temple. The Holy Ghost walked in the temple and ripped that thing down. Now, you walk into the Holy of Holies like you own the place. And you can walk out of the 10% tonight. Turn off the lights now. 90% of the people here are going to become 10 percenters tonight. You know what you're going to do? Click. I got my big IQ here. I know the Bible. I know Christianity. Oh, I've been to church for 40 years. 
do yourself a favor. Bag that crap. Yeah. Yeah, I know, that's deep. Just bag it. Okay? God doesn't respond to how much you think you know. He responds to your behavior. He responds to somebody who falls down and gives thanks. He responds to people that as they go, they were healed. They didn't just stand there and continue to yell at him. Hey, we need to be healed over here. I got leprosy. Hey, go show yourself to the priest. No, hey, no, ha, huh, hey. That's not what happened. They said, I heard the word of the Lord. I'm going to obey. And as they went, they were healed. As he fell down giving thanks, he was delivered. The other nine were only healed. Iyaomai, they were cured of leprosy. The other guy got delivered. Don't you see it? It's so clear. It's so clear. This girl gets healed tonight. She goes into the 10%. The rest of the church world, they stay in the 90%. Too proud, too arrogant, too busy, too much thinking. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I've done my best tonight, Lord, to make this as simple as I could. But you know my best is never good enough. But the Holy Ghost, oh, is his best good enough? Is anything he does good enough? Of course. Of course it is. Now there's 90 percenters here tonight. There's a few here. And they need to leave as 10 percenters. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, there's some intellectual Christians here who are going nowhere spiritually. They've been thinking and studying for years. They have been in church for years and have never fulfilled their destiny. They've been in church for years and are still sitting in the pews, still doing basically what they did years ago. Those are 90 percenters. Those are not the ones you want, Father. You want the ones that will climb a tree. You want the ones who will fall down and give thanks. You want the ones who will open their hearts and receive their healing on their deathbed like the dying thief on the cross. Those are the people you're interested in. People who see the simplicity of Christ. Lord, we do a lot of deliverance around here because that's what you told us to do and that's what we were led in to do, so that's what we do, but some people can't get delivered because they think too much about it. They think too much about it. Deliverance is easy. A broken heart, an open heart, simple repentance. The Holy Spirit moves like that. Demons collapse just like that. Bang, 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 bang. Father God, I'm asking you to forgive us for overthinking the gospel, for making it too technical, for trying to make it more complicated than it is. The simplicity of Christ is the golden era of Christianity. From the resurrection to this moment, the simplicity of Jesus, the simplicity of love, faith, compassion, brings people miracles, brings people healing. That is what you want. That's what you want. Simple things like love. Simple things like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Who's going to join this girl here who needs to be healed? Anybody? If not, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you. The bookstore is open if you need to get in there. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for your donations. The donation boxes are on the door. God love you. Who's going to join this girl getting healed right here? She's been verbally abused her entire life. She's getting healed tonight. Why? Jesus said, neither do I condemn you.
Neither do I. Can you get a porn problem? Neither do I condemn you. Huh? Uh, you, you hate yourself? Neither do I condemn you. Change. Change. You come down here, you're going to change. You're changing when you come down here. If you're not going to come down, if you come down here, and you don't come down here unless you're going to change. Okay, you need to leave. You need to go. It's okay. I'm not offended. The Holy Ghost wants to help people who will change. They're going to change attitudes, interests, desires, how they talk, how they relate to people. You want to change, and the Spirit of God will stay with you every step of the way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this uh, floor is kind of hard on your knees, so if, you, if your knees start to hurt, go ahead and stand up. You already kneeled. Father sees that. Father knows that. The Spirit of God is here at the Deliverance Center. We have all kinds of people healed and delivered here. The Holy Ghost is here. But the key to deliverance is keep it simple. The key to deliverance is repentance. The key to deliverance is you're sorry. I'm sorry. The key to deliverance is confessing it. Just confess it. The ministry team is going to come up here now and, and help me pray for you each one of you tonight, and you are not to leave here with demons, and you are not to leave here with any sicknesses or illnesses. You are to open your heart right now. Stop overanalyzing it. Stop thinking about it. Just repent. Just telling you're sorry. That's how you get miracles. That's how people get miracles. Just telling you're sorry. It's that simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay? Let's take the first one, the most important one. Your parents. If you rebelled against your parents and you said something hurtful about them or to them, that brings a curse on you. Let's get that curse off first, okay? Lord Jesus, please forgive me for what I said about my mom and my dad. I'm so sorry. I'm so incredibly sorry. Please forgive me. I insulted my mother and dad, my stepdad. I hated the way they talked to me. I hated the way they treated me. And I rebelled. I tried to pay them back. I verbally hurt them. I wanted to hurt them when I was younger. I hurt my mom and my dad. They sinned against me and they were wrong. And I knew they were wrong. And so I took it upon myself to tell them they were wrong. And I cursed them. And I rebelled against, and I disobeyed, and I did stuff I deliberately knew would hurt them. And when I did that, the Bible says I brought a curse on myself. Yes. I brought a curse yes. on myself. I want that curse off me tonight, Lord. I want to be forgiven for hurting my mom and dad right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, please forgive me, Lord. Come on, ladies. Father God, I murdered one of my children when I was young. I got pregnant. It was a bad situation. I was facing a disaster, and I got an abortion. And I'm asking you, God, to forgive me for murdering my, my daughter and my son. I'm asking you to forgive me and take this shame out of my body and my soul. I'm asking you to forgive me for what I did, Lord Jesus. Please help me. Come on, ladies. You had an abortion. Some of you used abortion as birth control. I've had people come in for counseling and had up to eight abortions. Eight's my record. In the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of having an abortion and letting in this spirit of murder, this spirit of death got in my body. And I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me for that. Have mercy upon my soul. I am so sorry for what I've done. If you'll confess it, God will forgive you. But you've got to confess it. You've got to come clean. Come out, devil. You've got to come clean right now and just confess it. Because you've got a curse on your life, and that curse will not lift off of you until you repent of hurting your parents, until you repent of murdering your children. You've got to do it. Now let's do it. Come on. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Husbands, right now, let me talk to you quickly. Just repent of it. If you hurt your wife, the Bible says your prayers are hindered. I repent of what I've done to my ex-wife. I trashed her. I called her a biatch. I hated her guts. I ran her down. I said negative things about her. And when I did that, my prayers stopped right there. Come on. You cannot run your wife down and trash your wife 
and gut her and get your prayers answered too. It does not work that way. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I hurt my ex-wife. I hurt my first ex-wife. I hurt my second one. I hurt my third one. I hurt my fourth. I kept hurting women. And I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus, I repent of it. Some of you were involved in the worst thing you can be involved in in life. That's witchcraft. You got involved in the occult when you were young. and You brought a curse on yourself. You brought in familiar spirits. Those are the worst demons you can ever run into. Familiar spirits. They are monsters. They are miracle workers. They are cold-blooded killers. They are Holy Ghost impersonators. You brought in familiar spirits. You got involved in the occult and masonry and shriners. You got involved in Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, you went to a seance. You fooled around the Ouija board. You fooled around the Ouija board. You went to a seance. When you did that, you hung yourself. You hung yourself. You opened the door to the spirit world. You opened the door. You opened the door to demons. The familiar spirits came in. They brought in curses. They brought in sicknesses. They brought in, quote, bad luck. Quote. They bring in, quote, bad luck. That means your life goes to hell in a handbasket. When you play around with familiar spirits, the occult, new age, witchcraft, with religion, Islam, Islam, Mother Mary demons, Hinduism, Buddhism, witchcraft. You went into a shrine. You went into a temple. You stepped somewhere you should not have stepped. In the name of Jesus, just repent of it. I renounce the occult. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce sorcery. I renounce seances. I renounce it right now. Come out of there, you stinking demon. Right now. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there, I said. Come out. Come out of there, you witch. Right now. Seance. Go. Come out right now. Come out. I command you to leave my body. I command you to leave my mind. Come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. I command you to go. Come on now. Listen, do not lay there and do nothing. You have to fight back. You have to fight back. You have to fight back now. Come on now. Come on, the Holy Ghost is getting ready to make his move. Just keep repenting. Just keep repenting. He'll come back. He'll make his move real quickly here. He's starting to move. I do not like to rush him. I just like to be patient. Just be patient with the Holy Spirit. He's working here. He works there. You don't want to rush things. Satan, I bind your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You people used to be in a false religion. Amish. Amish, Mennonite, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Episcopals, Pentecostal. Come on, just repent of it. Just repent of it. False religions, denominationalism. Just repent of it. Right now, Satan, I bind your power. False doctrine, I bind your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Familiar spirit, get out of my body. Come out now. Come out right now. I said go. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go in Jesus' mighty name right now. YouTubers, put your hand on your body. One on your stomach, one in your chest. And repent of hating yourself. You used to hate yourself. Just repent of it. You used to run yourself down. You placed curses on yourself. You cursed yourself. You said ugly things about yourself. I wish I was dead. I wish I was never born. You said that. You said that. Repent of it right this second. Just repent of it now. Come on, you hate your spouse. You have dishonored your spouse. You hate your spouse. You brought a curse on yourself because you hated your spouse. Come on, just repent of it. I apologize, Lord Jesus, for what I did. I apologize for cursing myself. I'll repent of it. I'm going to repent right now. Right now, I said. Now. 
In Jesus' mighty name. What you need, honey? Doors. Doors. What do you need from God? What's wrong? I used to be very, very mean to my mom. I used to be very she didn't have it. She was alive. Then my, my, son that, my son that is here with me, he also is the same to me. Yeah, we'll see ya. That curse came down. See? Is your mom alive? No, no, she died. She dead? What's her name? Maria. Maria, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I cursed myself when I dishonored Maria, my mother. And now my son has the same curse and he dishonors me. And the curse came down. And now my son will die a miserable life. My son will die with a curse on him because he he cursed me and I want this curse broke off my family in the name of Jesus and I apologize for hurting my mother and I want this evil to come out of me now breathe come out come out come out come out come out go spirit come out spirit come out Come out. Maria, come out. Maria, come out. Maria, all your demons, all your soul wounds, all the negativity, everything you've done to your daughter, we forgive you. Come out of her right now. Mother, I command you to leave me now. Come out of me right this second. Right now, I let her go. I let her go right now. In the name of Jesus, I release my mother from my soul and her spirit and all these wounds she hurt me with. And I forgive my son for what he done to me and all the bad things he said about me. I forgive him right now. And I release my son from my soul. And I turn him over to the Lord. I'm giving him to the Lord. And I repent of worry about him and fear about his future. I repent of it. In Jesus' name. Son, go. Mother, go. Go. Let them go. Let them both go. I release them both right now in Jesus' name. I give them both to God. My dead mother and my living son, I release him from my soul now. There, that spirit of fear just jumped in there. Get him out of there. Feel that? That's a spirit of fear. Come on. That's a spirit of fear. Come on. You feel that thing jump in there? Did you feel that? That's a spirit of fear from your mother. She dishonored her mother. She's got a curse on her. She trashed her mother when she was young. Now her son's trashing her. The curse went right down to her. Okay? Her miserable life passed on to the son. Her mother's miserable life passed on to her. Come on. Just repent of it. Repent of it. Come on. Good girl. Hey, you got to fight harder. you got to fight harder. Get out of my body right now. Fight harder. Fight harder. He is your favorite Witchcraft you gotta fight harder. Satan, I bind your power and I command you to come out. Satan, I bind your power and I command you to come out. There you go, good. Fight harder. You cannot pray casually to get a miracle from God. You gotta pray hard. You gotta repent hard. You cannot casually pray. This week was It was that my co worker. And my supervisor, who is lawmaking, he's had been persecuting me. And two days ago, he started mouth out just in front of me. So we made a complaint on HR about his behavior, and this is harassment. But can I find? The, I think this is a Islamic demon that come towards me. Yeah, but a better way to do it would be to do it this way. Lord, thank you for all these bad people who are attacking me. Thank you for that. And I give you praise for it anyway. 
And I ask you to bless them and help them. And I'm going to forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to forgive them right the second. And I'm going to put this in your hands, Lord, and release it because it's causing me stress and it's causing me pain. And I need the anointing to save me right now. And I'm going to release them right the second. Okay, take a breath. And go. Good. Another one. Go. Good. Go. 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 There it comes. Go. Good. There it goes. Come out. Come out of there. Go. Go. Go right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Go now. Go now. Come out. Come out. I got bitterness against co workers. Ouch. Ow. Come out. Come out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Get out of there right now. Are you going to repent over hurting your mom? I already have. Yeah. You have? Yeah. 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 Did you, I've, did I've you stop her? her? I've changed my life so much. Did you, did you stop hurting her? Yeah, it was just yesterday, so. Oh, yesterday. Okay. Let's go. What? If you hurt your mom, it brings a curse on you. Did you know that? Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, and I spoke to God. Trust me. Today has been filled with so many miracles. Oh, that's good. Now go ahead and repent of hurting your mom. Here, I'll show you. Dear Jesus, I brought a curse on myself because I said something negative to my mother and I hurt her. And the Bible says that brings a curse on me. And I can't afford to have any curses. Jesus, I, Jesus, I repent for cursing my mom for saying something bad about my mom. Good. I have any curses. And I was thinking about everything you were saying, too. I was taking it to heart. I'm the type of person who, who looks at myself first and there's a problem. All right. You know, I'm not. So, what did you say to your mom yesterday? What happened? That she was just a bad person? Oh, wow. That killed you. Come on over here. That will destroy the rest of your life. Go ahead and tell her you're sorry. I already talked to her. Yeah, go tell her right now. Did you tell her you were sorry? Tell her you're sorry. I'm sorry I hurt you, and I won't do it again. I won't do it again. Amen. Demons, come out now. Mother, go. Come out of here right now. Come out. Go right now. Put your hands up here. Put your hands up. Satan, come out of my mother right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, leave my mother right this second. Go! Go! Get right now. Get out of her mouth. Come out of her throat. Come out right now. There it is. There. Come out right now. Quicker. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there right now. I want you out now. Anger, frustration, and bitterness. Anger, frustration, and bitterness. Come out right now. Come out of my stomach. Right now. Come out of my gut. Come out of my stomach. From your spirits from Brazil. Witchcraft and sorcery from Brazil. Go. Go. Marriage demons. Come out of me. Come out. Go. Come out of my eyes and go. Come out now. There they go. Satan, lose your hope. Satan, lose your hope. Satan, lose your hope. What do you need, honey? Okay, stand up. What's wrong with you? What do you need? I have a real bad arthritic shoulder from falling down oh. drunk on it and breaking it all up. Oh, then why were you drinking? I was an alcoholic, but I'm not anymore. No, maybe. Um, what was the root cause of the alcoholism? My childhood and my parents' alcoholism. Oh, we parents were alcoholics? Did uh, they abuse you verbally? Real bad. Real bad. They're like not nurturing. They weren't nurturing because they were. Were they uh, unaffectionate? Yeah. So. They, yes, they they weren't affectionate. They were kind of away. no, and they my mother especially. I lived with her. She would flip flop. She could. You never knew. You could do right or wrong, and she would be mean or nice. It wouldn't make any difference. She was unpredictable. Absolutely. And unfair. Well, yeah. Yeah. But she was my best Unjust. friend by the time she died. But you loved her. Oh, I love her. You still. always loved her. Yes. And she's dead. Yes. And what's her name? Patsy. Patsy. Okay. 
Did you go through a period when you were young where you uh, were angry at her or hated her? Yeah. Okay. Raise your hands. Dear Lord Jesus, I used to hate my mother because she verbally abused me. She was unjust to me. Physically. And she physically abused me. And she was a terrible mother. And I told her she was a terrible mother. And I hated her. And the Bible says, the day I hated my mother, a curse from Satan dropped on my life. And I had broken relationships after that. Strange accidents hit me after that. The devil sent me bad men after that. I fell into alcoholism and adultery. Father God, I let every demon I could possibly imagine into my soul, into my body. Because I cursed my mother and that curse fell on me. And I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry I hurt Patsy. I'm sorry I said negative things about my mom. I'm sorry I cursed her. I am so sorry. And I'm asking you to heal me now. Heal my soul. That curse drove me into alcoholism. It drove me into poverty. It drove me into humiliation and embarrassment. It attracted bad men. And the devil tore my life to pieces like a wolf pack. And tonight I must relieve Patsy from my soul. I must let her go. Take a big breath. I must let Patsy go right now. Keep blowing. Come out. Patsy. Negative words, critical words, demonic curses. Patsy, in the name of Jesus, you are to leave your daughter tonight. Every spirit, every wound, come out of there. Every curse, break off of her. Break off of her right now. Right now, the demon in her body that blocks her healing from her drunken fall. We bind your power. We command you to come out. Come out now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Patsy, go. Patsy, go. Patsy, go. Heal. Anything? It's tender. Hmm? Okay. There's a bad man who... Many. Richard. The, wor the one, worst one. Richard. Richard, did he rape you? He beat me. Bad. And, that, and then? Uh, well, we were boyfriend and girlfriend on the street. He beat me all the time. Richard. And he almost killed me. The city all right. got Is he alive? Me. I don't know. Okay, raise your hands. Lord Jesus, I need to repent tonight of Richard. I was with him for a long time on the street, and I should have never even shook in his hand. And the devil used him to beat my soul, not just my body. And I hated him. I had bitterness toward him. I used to despise him. I used to fear him. And because of that, my healing's being blocked. My shoulder should have been healed years ago, and my healing's blocked. My healing's being blocked. I don't even know if Richard's alive anymore, but if he is, Lord, I want you to hunt down Richard, my old boyfriend, who physically and emotionally beat me and abused me. I want you to hunt him down. Now repent of all the adultery, all the money I wasted, all the money I spent on booze for nothing. I'll repent of it right now. And I command Richard's demons of abuse to leave me tonight. Come out right now, Richard. Richard, you come out right now. Go. Go now. Come on. Who else needs prayer? Come up here. Anybody need prayers? Streamers, you go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good, brother. My friend Graham's here. Love you. Hi, Mike. Nice Graham, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Graham. Okay. The day after I met with you and got delivered on those things that we got to talk about, I got to share with him, and he came to faith that night. That oh, good. Night. You just got saved? A lot of stuff. I did, yeah. Oh, and then what were you involved in? 
You addicted uh, to anything? Drugs and alcohol. Uh, and why? Dealing with uh, methamphetamine, psychosis. But uh, before that, how old are you? 27. Then when you were young, did somebody hurt you real bad? Yeah. Yeah, my parents. Who? Mom or dad or both? What did they do to you? Uh, they split up when I was 10. And then who did you stay with? Uh, my mom. She taught me rage. Yeah. Yeah. Anger. Is your mother still alive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What's her name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Now, the Bible says that if you trash your parents, a curse falls on you. Fire! The demons put a curse on you. And then that curse played out in... You wasted your life. Yeah, I remember we're like, we don't need That's because they're your, your mom. Yeah. yeah. So, close your eyes there. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. Just raise your hands there. Father. Lord, you see this good looking guy standing right here? He had no idea when he was younger. He had placed a satanic curse on his life because he hated his mom and dad. And he was very hurt over their divorce. It hurt him here in his soul. He was hurt. He felt abandoned. He felt lonely. He felt wounded. He felt scared. He was scared. He was scared. And the demons took advantage of him. And they entered his body. And they gave him rage. He learned rage. He learned to drink. He learned meth. The worst drug there is for demons. He let meth, the monster, in his body and gave him his soul. And tonight, he's going to repent of hurting his parents and hating them. He's going to forgive his parents lock, stock, and barrel. I mean, completely, totally, and completely right at this moment. He's going to repent of it. In the name of Jesus. He's sorry he got mad at his mom and dad. He's sorry he hated them. He's sorry he ruined his life and let spirits of meth enter his body. Hey, I know you can hear me in there. You've got to leave him tonight. He's turning his heart over to the Lord. You can't have him anymore. He's turning his heart on the Lord. Meth! Spirit! I heard. I know you can hear me. Come out. You're going to leave him. He commands you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every drug demon I let into my body, I want out. Every single one. Every second I spent hating my parents, I repent of it. And I ask God to forgive me. I forgive my mom and dad right now of everything they did. I don't need them anymore. I have a heavenly father. I don't need a dad or a mom anymore. I got my heavenly father and I can forgive them and release them. Take a breath and blow. Good. Come out, mom. Dad. Come out. Alcohol. Drugs. Come out. Meth. Leave. Yes, he does want you gone. Yes, he does. No, he's not going back there. No, he's not using you as a reserve. No, he's done with you. Don't tell me he's not done. He is done. Come out right now. Yes, he's done, I said. He said he's done. I'm done with meth and drugs and alcohol. I'm done. I'm done with it. Come out of me right now. I'm done with it. Come out right now. I'm done with it. I command you to come out of my body right now. Satan, I command you to get out of that body right now. Satan, come out right now. Get out of my friend. Come out of my friend. Get out of there, fat. Come out faster. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Oh, self, low self-esteem, self-hatred, self-pity. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop it. Diabetes, I bind your power. There it comes. Diabetes, come out. Come out of that. Go. Come out faster. Come out quicker. Come out. Satan, come out of me. Say that. Devil, come out of me right now. Get out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Get out of body right now. Hurry up. Get out of there. <laughs> hating myself, saying no. negative things about myself. Go. Come out right this second. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Go. Go. Come out quicker. I told you to get out of my body and I mean it. I'm not living in sin anymore. I'm not going to die and go to hell. 
I'm not wasting another 27 years of my life. That's, a, that's not going to happen. Now, I forgive my parents right now, and I command all their spirits to leave me. I forgive my mom for what she did. I forgive them for getting divorced. I'm turning my life over to my Heavenly Father. I don't need a dad. I don't need a mom. Go. Go now. Satan, loose your hold of me. Desire for drugs, come out. Low self-esteem, come out. Self-hatred, come out. Criticizing others, come out. Criticizing myself. Go. Go. Abandonment. Religion is this guy. Come out right now. Did you go? Were you? Did you uh, in, go to church when you were younger? No. No church. No. Okay. Do you ever curse yourself? Say, I wish I was dead. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Go ahead and repent of it. Lord Jesus, I repent of cursing myself and saying negative things about myself. I gave the devil permission to curse me. YouTubers, if you curse yourself and you say negative things about yourself, you give the devil permission to turn you into a meth addict like this poor guy. You give the devil permission to give you a physical illness. You'll get sick. When you say something negative about yourself, you become an addict. The devil, the devil gives you an addiction like he did this poor guy. I repent of it right now. I repent of saying negative things about myself. I repent of saying negative things about others. Is there anybody you think of you need to forgive right now? Anybody that screwed you over in the past, you need to forgive. Anybody. Everybody I've ever met. Okay, go ahead. Start now. Mention each name. Go ahead. Father, I repent and forgive each name. Make, make him say each name. Each name. Say it. How you doing? How to go? I hope you come back. Did he confess, my son? What? Did he confess, my son? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Did he apologize to you? Yeah. This is what they call but they call bipolar. <laughs> He's got bipolar, yeah. I saw that. But you got to release him to God. you got to let out. Let the Lord handle him. And you, you, you focus on yourself. Will you do that? Okay. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. Come on. Just mention the name. I forgive Joe. I forgive Bob. I forgive Julio. Whoever it is. Just forgive them. I repent and I forgive them. Come out. What else is in there? Oh, my brother. Your brother. My two brothers. Bad men. Let's go. Out. What's his name? Kurt. Kurt, you come out of that body right now in the Get name of Jesus Kurt. Christ. Come out. Go. Come out Get of me. Out. Go. Get out. I forgive Get you. Out, Kurt. I forgive away. Kurt. Go. Out. Right now. Come out. Get out. Come out. Come on out. Go. Go. There it is. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in the name of the Lord. Hurry up. Come out. Go. Right now. Go. Out. Come out. Come out. Go. Go. Every one of them. I forgive every one of them. Every single one. Yes, there you go. Good. I forgive everybody. That's how you do it. Excellent. Forgive everybody. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anything you haven't repented of? Pornography. Okay. Porn, porn is not the problem. It's, it's that low self-esteem thing in there. That's the problem. Porn's just the manifestation of it. Okay? Now go ahead and repent of it. Father God, I repent of using porn to make myself feel better. To make myself feel better. You need something? What she do to you? Um, she talked bad about me. Come out, hold it. To my brother. Quickly, come out. Quickly, come out. Quickly, come out. Your mom did what? 
Got yeah, one. there it is. Raise your hands. Come on, what was her name? What was your mom's name? Come on now, Jackie. Come on, just repent of it. Right now, Lord, I need to release Jackie from my soul. She verbally abused me. She said negative things about me. My family talked bad about me to my daughter. And I tried to raise her right. I know you did. Go ahead and forgive them. Come on. Yeah, they took her from you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, they took my daughter from me, but I know you can restore her. But I have to forgive them first. <laughs> I will not get my daughter back. I will never get her back unless I repent tonight. Come on. Just repent of it. There it is. Come. Keep coughing. Come out. Right now. That's them coming out. Go. There it is. Spirits of abuse. Come out. Right now. Quickly. 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 Come out. Unforgiveness, mother. Come on. Right now. Come on, just repent up. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out, buddy. What did you say? Her daughter? What did you say? Her mother. Come on. Hold that. Come out. Come on. Just repent of it. Lord, I repent of it. My family turned my daughter against me. My family turned my daughter against me. They stole her from me. And I'm hurt and I'm wounded. And I repent of it. Right now. I'm repenting right this second. YouTubers, listen to me. Your family can be a cancer. Families are like cancer. They start hurting you, abusing you, and mistreating you. You start taking in wounds on your soul. Those wounds are little ledges where demons sit. The wound in your soul is like a seat. A seat in a movie theater. You got a bad feeling about your dad. There's a seat in your soul and a demon sits on that seat and aggravates you. You have to get your family out of your soul. There's no other option. There's no other option. Every single family member that stabbed you in the back has to come out of there. Because that seat where the demons sit has to be removed. Once you forgive them, the demons just fly out. Demons are weak unless you're feeding them. So I think they were instruments of the devil. Correct. Yes, good. This lady just got the revelation. It just came to her. It was perfect. Perfecto. She said, the devil used my family to hurt me. And they were tools of Satan so that I could live a miserable life. And when I retaliated against my family with hatred, anger, disappointment, criticism, verbal abuse, cursing, I gave the devil a front row seat in my soul. It was a trick of the devil, and we can beat him tonight. All we have to do is forgive. And we can win this thing. What's that person's name, YouTubers? Just mention the name. Lord, I forgive so-and-so for hurting me. This lady right here is being healed of relatives who hurt her. The mother criticized her when she was young. Her other relatives said negative things about her to her daughter. Her daughter left her and believed the other relatives. That was all satanic. The devil made that whole story up to hurt her because he knew she had a good heart and she has love in her heart and she's a good person. So he trashed her using the relatives to get to her. All you have to do is see that picture and break it. Kick your foot right through the pane glass window of those lies. It's all lies. Satan, come out. Come out. Come out of there. That girl there has low self-esteem. She eats. He had low self-esteem. He took meth. Meth is the worst drug you can take for demons. It just ushers them in. Meth is extremely dangerous. Worse than any other drug. Meth draws in demons like you can't believe. Come on, just forgive them. There you go. Keep coughing. Come out. Every, every demon, come out. Spirit, come out of my body right now. I command all of you to come out. All of you. Come out right now. 
Let a girl say that. All of you come out. Every word of abuse, every curse, every relative that trashed me, I forgive every one of them. I want all this evil out of me now. Spirit of obesity, I command you to come out of her. Spirit of gluttony, I bind your power. Come out of her. You glutton. Come out of that body right now. You glutton. Come out of your eyes. Father God, I pray and ask you to give this man a God godly sorrow to repent in tears. That's what he's lacking, godly sorrow. He questions whether you love him, Lord. You do love him. You care about him. You've been crying over him, but he hasn't been crying because he hurt you. I'm asking you to give him godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Godly sorrow for this man of God because he has a healing ministry ahead of him. He's supposed to be healing people, and he's not, and the devil's stalling it. He's stealing it from him. I repent in tears, Lord. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I hurt myself. I'm sorry I hurt my family. I repent of using food as a comfort when I have the Holy Ghost. He's my comforter, not food. And I repent of it right now. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Come on, sweetie. Fight harder. At a girl. Fight harder. You'll get healed so much quicker if you fight harder. The demons will fly out like crazy. It's easy to get rid of demons. It's hard to repent sometimes. Just repent. Go. Come on, sweetheart. Spirit of fear and cowardice, I command you to come out of her right now. Shyness, come out of there. Right now. Come out right now. Every demon from fire and water, I bind your power. Come out. Fire and water spirits, come out. Every addict at fire and water, every one of their demons, leave. Come out. Come out. Go. Fire and water spirits, come out now. There they are. Here it comes. Fire and water, come out. Go. There it is right there. Every demon from the church of fire and water, I command you to come out of that girl. Right now, every one of you. Come out. Every spirit from church. Every church demon. Every spirit from church. I bind your power. Give them up. Come out. Holy Spirit, yes. Church spirits, no. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Kundalini spirits. Church spirits. Come out in Jesus' holy name. All right, streamers, you go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Thank you, Lord. God, forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Please forgive me, Lord. I have to forgive my family. I know you'll bring my daughter back if I forgive them. If I don't, I've lost her forever. Come on, let your tears go. Just repent over it. Just repent over it. Let your tears go. Godly sorrow. Receive this young man. Go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Go to the top of the website and click that little button there called Post Deliverance. If you don't go through the Post Deliverance and renew your mind, the spirits will try to reacquire you within 48 hours. They will come after you in 48 hours. YouTubers will be here tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday, is our children's deliverance service at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, we crank it up tomorrow. The training starts at 9 in the small sanctuary. 9 o'clock tomorrow. I will be here next Friday, 7 o'clock. The faith healers will be here next Thursday at 7 o'clock. Pacific time. Live stream. Livestream.com slash H-O-H-A-C Thursday. YouTube.com slash House of Healing A-D. A-Z. See you next time.